Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tonight, I would like to talk to you about the uh, changes to the official Type 3 GmbH partner program. We already talked about this on the partner day, one day prior to Type 3 Con, and Matthias hinted at it uh, during his session during T3 Con as well. But not everybody could make it to T3 Con, so basically, I'm trying to get you up to speed. So we're going to talk about the partner program, as I said, and let's first take a look at the current model. So the current model, as we see it and as we planned it, philosophy-wise, was to get high-quality partners into the partner program to show off to the world that Type 3 not only is the right solution, but that we have high-quality partners to show their work and um, their expertise in that field. But quality over quantity was kind of the first, well, um, so we thought that having fewer partners that are high quality would be a very, very good idea, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And we, of course, wanted to engage our partners in Type of 3, and that's why, I'm sorry, I mean, step over here, yeah. and I need to turn this around. Not around. Turn around. <laughs> All right, cool. <clears throat> so as I was saying, the plan with the partner program was to engage these partners more in the Type of 3 community, and this is why we had the, um, these requirements with the um, community commitment. You needed to have a certain amount of people certified in certain fields, but it was like if you're a development partner, those requirements were different from if you're a full service agency and such. And it was not only lots of requirements, but it also ended up to be quite a high entry barrier because not only did you need to fulfill this community commitment, you also had to have these mandatory items on um, official offers like you need to offer project reviews to your clients and you need to offer um, SLAs to your clients. While your clients do not have to take these options or these items on the offers, it was still mandatory to have them on them. So yeah, and our observation then was that most of the requirements were not met. Of course, on our side, there were some requirements that were not met, but even on our partner side, some partners did not fill in their community commitment or not on a regular basis, for example. Please turn off the phone. <laughs> and um, it was kind of like a hard jungle to juggle with to find out what, when do I need to provide what. And um, so we thought this was, this was not such a good idea. And, um, we saw that the market has changed, especially when it, when it boils down to my, um, what I initially said, that we wanted to have very few high-quality partners instead of having a whole lot of partners. Because whenever I was approached by end clients who were asking to have a project built, for example, some of them even approached me and were like, does Type of 3 really only have 40 agencies that do Type of 3? And I was like, no. These are just our partners, and here's why. But they didn't really care about the why. What they cared about was that there's just a short list on our website, typeof3.com. And it was out of reach for most countries, because even if we look just to Denmark and France, they just, because Type of 3 is not that while not that big of a deal in that country, there are other CMSs who do the job as well. Um, they were, on one hand, they were hesitant to join the partner program, and on the other hand, some couldn't afford it. And especially if we look to Africa and India, it is quite hard for them to achieve um, to become a partner when that means that this is the salary of two developers for a year, for example. And as I said before, it was a very, very complicated model. Um, the number one topic I always get asked about when I talk to new agencies who would like to become a partner 
is the topic of leads. Um, there is kind of a misconception when it comes to leads as far as my experience goes because I'm the partner manager and I talk to all the agencies and I also talk to the leads initially. And the thing is that the agencies come from the perspective that there will be like 10 leads a month coming in, going to them, but that's not how it went because when we started with the lead qualifying, we had, we put so much effort into the pre-qualifying aspect of leads. So as an example, when an, a potential end client who wants to do a project with type of three, or I don't even know yet if they even want to do a project with type of three because they're currently in the, in the state of just evaluating CMS, they have certain very important uh, points that are important to them, like let's say a client from Hamburg, he only wants to work with an agency that is in Hamburg or close around Hamburg, which means that this lead will never show up for any agency that is not in that area. This is one of the major concerns that we needed to tackle and this is basically why we needed to change something. And here's a little nice quote that we, uh, that we found. You need to step out of the way fully, I guess. So change the way you look at things. A and, and? Okay, this is not such a good quote. And at the things you look at, cha that, that change? Oh my God, I can't remember right now. I screwed things up, I'm sorry. So this is the quote. Let's not think about that. So what we wanted to do when it comes to changing the partner program, we want to make it available to everyone. And we want to make it affordable for everyone, which means that it will have a, the new partner program will come at a somewhat reduced price, but there will also be local pricing. And this is the important point I need to put emphasis on here. There will be local pricing so that people in India who are striving agencies will be able to afford to become an official partner. And it should be t attainable for everyone. And this is where I need to circle back to the requirements that we had in the partner program or that we have in the partner program how it is right now, that these requirements will need to go away. And of course, as a result, as a projection of the result, it will show more global presence because when it is more affordable to people in Africa, more affordable to people in India, even in France and Denmark, we will have more partners, we will have more case studies. And type <clears throat> I need to drink something real quick. Where is my water? There it is. And thus, we'll of course have more visual outreach for type of three, of course. Must be the pain coach. So, we want the Type of 3 partner program to basically become the new spot for Type of 3 agencies, for Type of 3 freelancers, of course, for hosters, for service providers, and of course for businesses. And the good news is there will be a free partner program as an entry point for everyone. But as well, when it's free, we need to do some, you know, th there will not be that many, f many features in a free partner, bro uh, partner program, but um, we'll come to that. What we want to do is to, be, uh, to give you the opportunity to have your professional f uh, profile and style it to your needs. So there will be a free version and a well, let's call it basic version, or uh, I think we even call it pro version, where there's some features in it, but you can book features on top. And this is where I need your input and where we need your feedback, because I want to talk about what items could be on that list that aren't there yet. So that you can see what we're talking about here. So we have a free version where there's just on the partner listing on typeof3.com, where there's just a company name, a city and country, so that you can be found on the map, but there is no backlink and there is no partner profile page. 
but it should give you the incentive that if you would like to have more than just be one of the agency uh, names on that list, you can become a basic member, for example, which gives you a logo and a backlink on top. And then there's the pro membership, which also gives you a more prominent listing, the profile page, as most of you probably have seen before on type3.com. Link blog posts, certifications, and even link case studies, free job listings, and access to exclusive merch, while that is something for the future. Um, the thing is that the list of add-ons that go with the pro partnership, that is not set in stone yet. We're still thinking about a pricing. We're currently thinking about the um, pro partner program cost for like 100 euros a month. This is currently our ballpark that we're thinking about. And um, I need to take a step over here so you can read that. Um, since case studies and guest blog posts turn up a lot of work at our place, because we need to review them, we need to do the correspondence with the, with the partner, um, we basically have a service fee for that which is not set in stone either, but it will most likely end up in the around 300 euro per pop ballpark. Um, but we also thought about having something like book a core developer and um, book meetings, sales help, pitch help, stuff like that. And this is where I would, would like to go because we even have it on that slide, we want feedback. I would like us to take a few minutes, either now or after, my, uh, after the basic part of the presentation is done, to talk about what other items we could add or what your impressions are of the changes to the partner program so far. So, would you like to take this step now, or should we do this afterwards? No. Decide. Flip a coin. So afterwards. OK. No big deal. Um, since there are some, some of our partners here, you're most likely, likely asking yourself, but what will happen to existing contracts when the partner program changes and stuff like that? No worries. There will be no immediate changes to how the stuff works. You still have the same benefits, but also the same requirements until your partner contract ends. And then we would just ask you how we would proceed with a, basically a transfer between the old and the new partner program and work something out individually. Of course, since you supported us, we're very, very grateful for that. And so we would like to give you some, some benefits to the partners of the old partner program, basically, which is to give you a founding partners badge that will be there forever, even if you decide to, um, to cancel the partner program for, say, two years and then come back, you will still have your founding partner program badge because you were one of the founding partners that supported us. And for the first year, you will have the highest ranking in the partner program list just to show off all the founding partners, basically. And you will also receive a free pro partnership for one year. So yay, cost savings. <laughs> this is all going to start in Q2 2020. We initially aimed for Q1, but we quickly found out that um, even on a technical side of things, so many different things need to change to make this happen. And especially because I want the partner profiles to show you more that they do today, I want to have more different aspects of what, does, what field does the partner see themselves in the most, even though that should be, um, that pointer should be available from the case studies a partner uh, published. But if there is no case study yet, so a partner could go ahead and, uh, you know, underline if they're more into tourism, if they're more into industrial large company clients or what have you. So this is already the part where 
the official part of the partner program presentation basically ends because this is all not set in stone as I said before and we're trying to figure out how to best do it. So and this is not only questions but also let's talk about what what would you want to see in a partner program which items could you see as a form of a um, air quotes microtransaction in that regard um, which are basically monthly subscriptions but first off any questions yeah Um, basically, the certifications that are already available in the Type of 3 universe, yeah. um, they will still be part of the partner profile, yeah. which are in the pro partner program. Is it a requirement? Or is it, it, is, it, is it is not a requirement anymore, but yeah. it will have some influence on your ranking. Yeah, um, I think it is not right now. Maybe we'll circle back to it, to it being a requirement. Yeah. But from my personal experience with talking to potential leads, potential type of three clients, um, I found out that while certifications is a top becomes a topic for them, it is not mandatory for them right now. Yeah. And so in that regard, I don't want I don't want it to be intransparent on the one hand, and I don't want it to become complicated because the process of an agency sometimes forgetting to inform us that they have new, um, new certifications in their staff is kind of an issue. And sometimes we find out like, um, especially after a certification day, that it took a longer time than necessary to have these new certificates on the website. And yeah, we'll, we'll sti still need to figure out how to work with that. Does that answer your question though? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. More questions, please. Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very short trip and I don't have anything else prepared but to dance. <laughs> so, there's but no it's, a, it's a good dance. There's no question left. Uh, what about the freelancer program? What about the freelancer program? First, we're going to tackle the agency partner program, but there will be changes that kind of lean on the uh, agency partner program but we're currently in the evaluation phase of finding out what to do. Mm -hmm. So um, we were currently also thinking about, even though that the freelancer partner program is only 250 bucks a month, we're still figuring out if the price needs to change in some regard. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know yet is the correct answer here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. in Q2 2020. Okay. We don't want to rush things like we did in 2017, so we'd rather take a, a few months more and then have it running awesome instead of just, well, it's okay. <laughs> more questions, please. I have a comment, not a question, if that is okay. I'm sorry? I have a comment, not a yeah, question, yeah, sure. if that is okay. Give me your comment. Uh, regarding the pricing scheme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like uh, free, pro, and what free, the basic, and pro. Yeah. yeah. Free, basic, and pro. Exactly. And I was um, with every pricing scheme, I have the same issue. There are a couple of features that I like from the pro scheme. Mm -hmm. um, yet I have to pay for all the other features as well um, for my upgrade. Okay. I wonder whether it would be possible to have a pricing scheme where you start with the, the free or the pro scheme and then buy single features. Okay, hang on. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Let me just go back to the overview. Whoops, there we are. Um, do you have a specific example? Profile page. Mm -hmm. Say I want to be in the basic membership, but yeah. I'd like to have the profile page, yet I don't want to pay for the lead blog post because I don't have a blog at all. Okay. <laughs> Interesting thought. Mm -hmm. I want to get rid of that. I know it makes the state way more complex because then you 
Yeah, but this could be done in like a self-service platform kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. So I don't think that would be too much of a nuisance for us. Yeah. And you um, have to put price, price tags on every single thing. So okay. prominent listings pay 10 bucks a month. Profile pay 5 bucks a month or whatever. We'll think about a good price. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, but so... But Exactly. Into the into I like the way you think. So I'm from the gaming scene. So basically you want a free to play game where you can buy something from the item shop when you want it and what you want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. For a couple of months or a year. Okay. So basically delinking some of the items we have already listed in kind of packages. Yeah. Well, okay. Get rid of the pros game altogether and make them they want to buy. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. Any suggestions on that topic from somebody else, maybe? What do you think about his comment? I think it's, it's a, good, a good way. So you can, um, can create packages, for example, or special offers. This year or this, quart uh, this quarter, we have uh, mm. less um, profile pages, and then we say an offer, OK, you get profile pages for three months. For a lower price or something like that. So a sale on yeah. part of the program <laughs> items. Okay, okay, oh, that's good news on <coughs> the website. That is, that, is, that is definitely something to keep in mind. What I would like to add though is that when it comes to profile pages and blog posts, for example, um, we're currently thinking about offering translations to all the languages that we have typeof3.com in right now. So we, what we could offer would be translations to Dutch, to French, to Italian, to Greek, to create even more outreach. I think this would, um, the, the largest impact in my opinion, but I would like opinions on that, would be for case studies when it comes to that. Because especially um, a good example here is the Netherlands. If Dutch people only have an English version of a case study, um, for example, I don't think the impact would be as great as if it would be available in Dutch because Dutch people are, um, they like their language, so do the French. I mean, so do we, and we still don't have type of 3DE. That was a rhyme, it wasn't, I, I didn't prepare that. <coughs> My apologies. <laughs> so, but I think when it, when it comes to the availability of having your profile pages localized. That would be awesome, right? Don't I you think? I actually disagree. What do I do with a, pro with a Dutch profile page if I don't have a single person in my company who speaks Dutch and Good. can actually help the client work with me? Good point. But what if we could, you know, channel these to, I don't know, translate it back maybe and yeah, get you at least in touch with them to find common base in English? You know? I'm sorry? Yeah, where you get some text of which language are spoken inside the company, for example. Sometimes. Exactly. But I think, I think the, the idea to, to make it in, in those groups is, is not bad because when I think everyone wants, wants a profile mm -hmm. page, right? And uh, maybe not everyone wants a, a linked blog post. Mm -hmm. But it would be good if we got more blog posts from type of free companies, right? Um, because this is a marketing um, aspect. Yes, because yes. Um, I sense a little misunderstanding, so I would like to clear things up if there is one. Um, the link blog posts and the link case studies, this is just basically if you're, well, currently how it is, if you're in the pro tier, if you ever um, provided a blog post or if you ever provided a case study, this will, this will, linked, will, will just be linked in your case study, um, in, your, in your partner profile. Oh my God, the pain colors. Yeah. And that would be good to, to, um, have a, uh, to reach a, a bigger group of, of um, audience. No? Okay. If we create more content. That doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. That's actually quite a good idea. So, so you, let's just say, 
You become a partner in basic. Yes. You, you, you add the profile page. Yeah. And you're done. You have your monthly subscription cost. And then, I don't know, like one year later, you have a great case and you would like to hand it in. So you add, add the case. You could even then go ahead and decide, I want to push it even more on type3.com, so why not make a blog post about that case? You know? But when, when you upgrade to the pro version to get the profile page... Um, like I'm just one. thinking unlinked right now. Yeah. So f forget about the, the, uh, that, it, that it is linked right now. Okay, then I misunderstood my, my, it. <laughs> oh, sorry. My idea was uh, to leave it as it is. So, when okay. you want the profile page, I think everyone wants to have this. Yeah. And you upgrade to the pro version, the pro version and then you, you, you pay for also the link blog post and um, yeah, something else. Mm -hmm. And then you are more triggered to, to give those blog posts to the type of people who use yours. It, 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 it will give an incentive to yeah. hand in blog posts and case studies even though it is not a requirement. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. and it won't be a requirement. I think uh, in the end it will, it will create more content. Yeah, or I skip the profile page altogether because then I have to pay for the whole package. Yeah. And I only want to do yeah, one sure. thing. So I don't, yeah. I use one item out of like eight, mm. so I won't go for it. And yeah. I don't want to buy into it. Yeah, I understand. I, I don't know what, what, <coughs> what's better, but uh, it could be an idea. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Hmm. But who would want to go without a profile page, though? I mean, wh why no, would I not I want to have a profile page? Yeah. <laughs> That's the plan. <laughs> the plan is that we have flourishing partner <laughs> profiles where people have their stage to show off their work, basically. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> that you could buy single features and say, yeah. okay, this year I want the blog post and right. I sign into it. But, but you can decide after a few months if you can see everybody is <laughs> buying basic package and pro, uh, adding the profile page, you can arrange the packages. Yeah. Ex exactly. After, and this after, let's say after one year you say, you see, nobody is buying pro package, only profile page and basic. Exactly. This, is, this, is, this, this would be one of the time will tell processes I and guess if you have but different modules you can uh, you can um, change the prices offers uh, to, to sell more of these packages yeah? mm -hmm. Okay, so I should... No, my choice would be... Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Um, my choice, for example, would be free with permanent listing. That really sounds a little bit absurd. Yeah, right. but <laughs> because it's, it's because just, just, just to fill you in, the free profiles will always be below course, the paid profiles. Sure. And really, another, another thing about ranking, though, because currently... Um, we were, we are th actually thinking about making the ranking mechanics transparent, because um, I don't know if you know about that, but there's currently a um, a rank a contributor ranking being, I think Matthias teased it, but I'm not sure. Um, there is basically a contribution ranking page where you can see how many people reviewed a patch, how many people commented on a patch and stuff like that. And you can get, uh, well, for the lack of a better word, we called it karma points for now, but the name might change, um, which is something that, you know, stuff like having certifications would pay into your scoring, which then goes into your partner list spot, which is there to 
we don't just want to have, you know, you have like a huge company, you are a platinum member of the Type of 3 Association, and you have 60 certifications, that would just automatically rank you up, right? But we don't want this to be like, we want it to stay competitive. When it comes to smaller companies, you contribute, you get points. You get a certification, you get points as well. You're not as big as the large platinum company, put more work in and you could be on top as well. This is just about the, um, or it would basically on, on, on the list of this items, this would just affect, <coughs> like blog posts could have like few points, the case studies would have more points, certifications would have some more points, stuff like that. We didn't find a c good way for that yet. Have you ever thought about a, a review process for customers who can um, yeah, review the, the work of agency, also to, to leave a comment or something like that? That, that is something that we would like to have uh, influence the ranking as well. If a project review is made or even an extension review is made, that would put points onto your karma score basically. Depending on how well or how not well, because we're just basically the um, unabhängig? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you guys. The uh, independent entity in that regard, so we don't have any stakes in that, so we would always be honest and transparent about um, such a project review. So what we could imagine is to have um, a project review get a, get a scoring, and that scoring puts points onto your comma budget, basically. Anything else? Yes? Just another comment. Mm -hmm. I feel that the <laughs> Platinum program is somehow based on the idea of companies, and there's only a company or a freelancer. What I find by now is that many companies buy freelancers um, to get the additional certificate or to get the additional knowledge into their project. Okay. And there are also meta companies where like multiple agencies merge together like what are they called in South Plus Germany? Work. Hmm? Plus work? Plus work, uh, Fight Club. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of meta companies by now. Yeah. And I, I don't see how they be, be represented in this uh, scheme. For hmm. example myself I, I have a network of freelancers Together we probably hold a bunch of certificates and some knowledge about type of three. Yeah, um, but we would never be represented because we're not a company. Okay. We don't have a resolution for that yet, mm -hmm. but it came up on multiple occasions that we need to figure out how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. That's what I can tell you now. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I think that in Q1 2020 I could say more, but at this point in time we didn't find any good solution for it yet it's just a comment uh, just the comment that and it's a very it's valuable comment always organized in companies like yeah, sure it's, it's the same thing yeah it's, 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 it's a process and this uh, have some some structure in mind and so and, and it's, it's it's good to, it's it forces this structure mm -hmm. and uh, this is the thing not everybody uh, finds the self in this structure to not, not every organization fits in this and but but this forces some sort of structure. okay um, what I could add to this is that when it comes to contribution, just as an isolated topic, um, you basically, you have your name and your contribution score. And what you could do is if you work for a company for a certain amount of time, you could add yourself to that company and then your points will pay in on their company record, basically, which is the sum of all the people that contribute within that company. And when you leave, you have still have your individual points. Yeah, but I'm a freelancer. I work for two or three companies at the same time. As I said, this is just for one person mm -hmm. in that regard and just for contribution points in that regard. But we will figure something out. Uh, some comment. What yeah. about um, only guessing? Uh, organizing uh, some type of dry camp or organizing some user group it's it's beyond the code or it's this is this is still very very valuable contribution and, and if 
if we would treat it like a miles and more program, for example, there are, there are so many things you could do to get more miles. So, more huh? special, special exactly. amount of karma for organizing type of weekend, attending type of weekend, organizing user group, and some other stuff. For holding a session, for yeah. example, stuff like that, yes. That's a basic, um, um, basic uh, structure of the karma. Exactly. Exactly, and that's going to be that's going to be parts of what influences the score then. Not only the core contribution will be. Uh, yeah, exactly. Con contribution to type of three in what way ever. But we need to define how many counter points for what. So we need to. Um, that's the tricky part. The data. Yeah. Who is organizing? Who is attending? And but if you want the points, you have to tell us. So, yeah. if you, for example, organize. A camp or a trip to India, for example, like you did. No, wait, did you organize that? No matter. If let's say you did, Something all right, <laughs> then you would come approach me or Type of Three GMBH, for example. Here, this is what I did. Yeah. What's my points? And yeah, we'll so. give you points for that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Karma cash out. Karma cash out. Yeah. Crypt <laughs> cryptocurrency, then, right? Yeah. What, what about if you if you could maybe what what about if you could maybe spend some of your karma points to get a free ticket to yeah. an event? That, that's How about that's that? One, one of the ideas of karma. Yeah. You can spend your karma to get some benefits. That's cool. For example. Or for to some. Buy something or to donate to to something. That is donate nice. Donate to other uh, extension uh, for an extension or not. Okay. I have the extension of Pia, and I donate some karma points to him. Mm. I think we should uh, talk with uh, Matthias, who had the idea of the karma. Yeah, we need to write down all the karma ideas and then just yeah. filter out the ones that are just quick yeah, ideas. We, we, need but to, we need to look uh, how, um, how we get to the data. Yeah. That's an important thing. Yeah. yeah. You just said that the, the karma points uh, can effect on the ranking and the listings. Exactly. Right? Exactly. That's that's what I that's what I wanted to say. So if we would have that ability, somebody could just push a single individual. Like, here's one million points. Here's all the points we have, and he's going to be on, on rank one forever. No, I wouldn't do that. No, no, no. I'd be against it, but that would probably happen. That if I will come upon it, yeah, there would be a black market for comma points. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know that at all. Like. We'll meet under the bridge of Ogrimar. Hey, some karma points here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do you want to buy karma points or an A? <laughs> no, let's not do that. Karma points. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's nice. Um, how am I in time? Because what I what I would like. So we have open end. Let's yeah. get some drinks and <laughs> just continue. Oh, okay. Um, I get some gin. <laughs> I'm going to get the tonic. Um, just something I wanted to show you because I don't know if everybody in here heard already. Um, Type of three GmbH finally made the move. We um, moved into a new office, and I would like to show you some photos real quick because we went to a new place. We're completely stoked about. I think you can tell. Um, we're super stoked about that. And as I, as I said, no immediate changes. Uh, question. So the new office. This is when we, yeah, when we were like, is this ever going to be an office? I'm not sure. But walls were already in, no glass panels yet. But there are some glass panels, but still construction work and stuff. This is our floor. Looks much better now, doesn't it? And here, this is our new presentation area. We have a presentation area at our office. This is one of the new conference rooms. And this is basically where we all work. Here's a dog. Here are some chairs. 
This is Marco. Say hi, Marco. Hi. <laughs> Our new storage space is twice as big as before, so we can start talking merch again. And yeah, well, Anya, she's not very happy that she's been taking a photo of. Julian and Renate. Our, our new kitchen. And, and here, bless you. And here's some facts about it. So we have 800 square meters now, instead of 200. We have a presentation area for 70 plus people, which is awesome. I say 70 plus because we only unpacked 70 chairs yet. <laughs> we have a sprint area, fully fledged, with tables, with screens, huge mouse pads, but you still need to bring your laptop and peripheral. But for 16 people, we have four micro meeting rooms. Well, I basically slapped the label micro meeting room on it because it's based, for me, it's a phone booth. I always like to walk around and stand up when I, when I have a phone call. So having a place w to go where I'm like in solitude is kind of good. And we have two conference rooms, one which is currently packed for 10 people and one for 14. And we have a dedicated video production studio now. So no more in the smoking room rec slash recreational room slash audio room slash video cutting room. No more, none of that. We have a, it's in the middle basically of the, of the place while the office goes in the year around it in the middle of a place, especially sound is taken care of. We have a video recording room and we have a post-production room now, both dedicated and uh, we already have it, had it running and then we had to pack the cameras because we were asked if we could bring them. So, so we will see more videos. That was nice. You will see more videos okay. in the near future. I can't really say when because we're currently waiting for some more construction work in a recording room that needs to be done before we can put the place up to its final stage, but there will be videos again, yeah. So basically for now, thank you guys. <laughs> And especially thanks for your input, thanks for your comments, <laughs> because we were, we were basically sitting at the office, l l well, late at night, it always sounds like we're always there late at night, but it was late at night. <laughs> um, we were sitting there and Loyola, is the linking good? Should we unlink some of the items? What would be better? Let's just present this and see what happens. So, while I am not in a position to make promises, I will put my, um, my heart into getting more items unlinked because I think this is a better approach. I'm convinced this is a better approach. So let's see what happens. Thank you.